Hi Stamping Friends, Melissa Kerman here with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Today I have a project for you that's a homemade gift card holder made with the Christmas Pines and Buffalo Check stamp sets and I am making this from scratch and I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that measures four and a quarter by eleven. I'm scoring it on each side at three eighths of an inch and I like to turn it around and do three eighths inch just to make sure that both sides are exactly the same. And then I'm going to store, score it um, going the other direction at one and a quarter and five and a half. Now I have here uh, the, a version where I've already done my cutting out. So I cut out the top two little segments and the bottom two segments of the three eighths inch wide on both sides. So I'm just leaving two flaps right there in the middle. And when I cut it out, I cut it at a slight angle. It's sort of um, beveled, I guess, and that just helps it fold up a little bit better. And now I'm coming in with my um, uh, corner rounder, and this is on my envelope punch board, um, but you can use any corner rounder that you want. The detailed trio punch also has a corner rounder on it in case you have that one instead. So now I've just rounded the corners on all four sides. And now I'm going to round the corners on my inside vanilla piece. This is the little insert piece that goes into um, the gift card holder. And this is what you would attach uh, your gift card to, uh, probably with a glue dot. Now what you see here is a, a vanilla piece, and I, in the end, ended up using a piece that was crumb cake. It kind of looked better with the design, so uh, I'll probably bring that in at some point. So now I have my tear and tape and I'm just trying to get my size and I'm going to pull off a piece and put it onto each of the flaps of the, um, the body of the gift card holder. And when I was doing this, I was folding it up and, uh, well, you know, quite a bit and just kind of testing and making sure that um, everything was oriented the way it was supposed to be. You can see it sort of looks backwards when you're attaching um, the little flaps to the inside. So um, just make sure that you're putting the tear and tape on the right side of the flaps and that it folds up properly. So now I'm going to be stamping my buffalo check image on the whole back side of the gift card holder. And this is actually a different piece. I didn't actually put the tear and tape on this, but if I had, it would have been on this back side, on the two flaps on the back side. So I've started by um, stamping the top portion, and now I've folded it over just so that I have a, a clean, clean stamping on the bottom section um, of the back side. And so, of course, I'm holding it down just so that it doesn't move and, uh, and then going ahead and stamping the image. And I used this Stamparatus um, to get my positioning just so, and it, I think it really did help uh, to line it up uh, the way I wanted it to be. And that really just allowed me to make sure that the buffalo check was square on and um, parallel to the side edges and the bottom edges um, of the piece of cardstock, you know, for the most part. So now I'm going to be stamping on uh, what is really the inside of the gift card holder. And so I've only inked up the top of the Buffalo Check um, uh, stamp because uh, I'm not concerned about the bottom portion of this section just because it's going to be on the inside. The only part that's really going to show is that top flap which is going to get folded over and is going to show on the outside. So next for this piece I'm going to put my tear and tape on those flaps and in fact it is a little bit better to put the tear and tape on after you've done your stamping so the, um, uh, you're not getting ink on uh, those pieces of tear and tape. So I'm going to now burnish all my uh, edges using my bone folder, make sure it folds up nice and crisply. And next I can pull off the backings of my tear and tape and actually attach um, the uh, gift card holder together. And it essentially makes uh, a nice little pocket. And uh, this could also be used just as a card uh, with an insert in it. So now I'm going to take my crumb cake piece of cardstock, and you can see I've rounded the corners just like I did on the vanilla one. And as I mentioned before, I did opt to use this crumb cake um, color instead of the vanilla. I thought it looked better. And I'm just going to stamp my sentiment at the top and uh, the uh, little foliage images around the corners. 
You can also stamp the foliage uh, along the bottom two corners too if you like. So as you can see here now I'm uh, using a sponge with my early espresso ink and I'm going to sponge every edge that I can uh, get to uh, all around the outside edges as well as the top edge of the fold and I'm using um, a sanding block to make sure that all the edges are nice and smooth. Sometimes when you punch um, uh, corners or use a corner rounder um, it's not always um, exactly smooth so uh, the uh, sanding block comes in handy for that. So next I'm going to put some uh, dimensionals on the back side of the flap. Uh, I wanted it to sort of stand up a little bit so you could see the edge a little bit more and the sponging also helps to see the edge a little bit more and I'm just going to go ahead and attach that flap down and then my pocket is all set created and ready to go. So now all I have left to do is uh, to create the uh, beautiful embellishment that goes on the front and I'm starting with my shaded spruce ink and the Christmas Pines stamp set and I'm just going to stamp all over a scrap piece of uh, the shaded spruce cardstock as well as a punched circle of that same cardstock and I have uh, stamped it with full ink and second ink so that it um, uh, has some dimension to it. So now I'm going to use that scrap to punch out uh, three of the shaded spruce sprigs that are stamped and that's really just so that it has some texture and looks more realistic, um, the stamping that is. Now I have uh, punched one off camera I think, I, kn I know I used a third one. Uh, so I'm going to start using with my bone folder, I'm going to uh, sort of curl them up just a little bit again to kind of give them a more natural look and so they're not quite so flat. And I'm also going to punch out uh, the same sprig shape uh, from a green uh, glimmer piece of uh, paper and also um, uh, one in the red glimmer paper. So I'm kind of assembling my pieces there. I have, so I have three that are just on the regular shaded spruce cardstock, two on the uh, green glimmer uh, paper. And then, of course, I'll punch one out in the red in just a bit. So I'm built, basically building my embellishment, um, starting with the two green glimmer um, sprigs. And I'm using glue dots to attach them. And now I'm attaching my um, the three stamped shaded spruce sprigs. And now, last but not least, I'm going to attach the red sprig um, in the center on top of um, all the other pieces. So now I'm taking a piece of my uh, red ribbon and uh, making my two dog ears and I'm doing what I call an air bow and sometimes I like to actually tie the bow when it's still on the roll and that just allows me to be a little bit more uh, conservative with how much ribbon I use. I tend to waste less if I do it this way. You can see I'm using my little pencil trick uh, and it basically gives me extra fingers. <laughs> uh, and I can also shape uh, the ears of the bow as well because I have this nice round shape of the pencil. So now I'll just use a glue dot to attach my bow to the top of my embellishment. Now I've used a gold snowflake doily as the base for my embellishment and it is in fact retired. Um, but it worked perfectly so I had to go for it and I'm using dimensionals on the back side of it so it's raised up a little bit on the surface and uh, just attached my embellishment to the doily and I'm all set to go. So for a complete supply list and project dimensions um, definitely check out my blog post. There is a link in the video description below and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, you can uh, click on the bell and you'll be notified whenever a new video of mine comes out. So I hope you have a great day and happy crafting.